So, when I was a kid, the best magic show around was at an amusement park called Adventureland by a magician named Ben Eulen. And I bet I saw it 20 times growing up. I just loved it. I watched it over and over and over again. Other kids wanted to ride the roller coasters. I just wanted to go see the magic show six times a day. Ben has performed a staggering 20,000 shows at Adventureland. It's the longest running magic act in amusement park history. For those of you doing the math, that's six shows a day, seven days a week, all summer long for 30 years. That is a lot of shows. So I bet I've seen your show 20 times because I grew up, you know, within driving distance of Adventureland. and. My parents would, would bring me just to see the show. Other kids wanted to ride the roller coasters. I wanted to just sit in that theater and watch the magic show seven times. Like, I, I just loved it. And the thing that I didn't understand then that I have come to appreciate now is that, you know, building a career as a professional magician where you're not in Los Angeles or you're not in New York or you're not in Las Vegas, like, that is a massive undertaking. And I remember I used to think that you had to live in New York, or you had to live right, in, right. in Las Vegas, you had to live in Los Angeles, and, and, and you don't. Can you talk about how that works and how, how you came into that? In, in, in college, uh, uh, I, I was kind of struggling with exactly what I was gonna do, because I, I still hadn't thought about magic as a, as a career. I, I'd worked in a magic shop, I thought, that'd be cool, maybe I'll own a magic shop, and, right. and, and talent agency kind of thing. So I found a book on, on starting your own business, and they said, oh, you have to have a business, a mission statement. And, and uh, of course, I didn't have a business. How do you make a mission statement if you don't know what the business is? But it also suggested a personal mission statement. And so I remember this. Um, I thought hard about that. I, I had several the week or whatever thinking, what is my personal? And I, what I wrote down was, um, I want to live my life comfortably off of my own creativity and ideas. And that was it. That's all I wrote. That's, that wow. would, I, I thought about that hard, and that's what it was. Notice what's missing. Anything about performing, right. anything about magic. Right. There was nothing about me being an entertainer or, or anything like that. But it was about, I love being creative, I love, I get jazzed sitting and coming up with ideas and being able to exercise those ideas, put, you know, put them into place. So the key was this, I have never, even though I, I know that I have to label myself a comedy magician to kind of remind people, oh yeah, you were right. you know the show, I've never thought of myself as a magician. I've never thought of myself as an illusionist, as a strolling magician, as I've done all of these. I've never thought of myself as a children's magician. I've right. never thought of my I've always been me, Ben Eulen. So and and so I've adjusted, you know, I I do lots of strolling magic at restaurants, right. and birthday parties, we're you know, old, you know, senior citizens' homes. I worked on cruise ships, comedy clubs, the illusion show out here, the, the lots of corporate work. That's what I really think of myself as a corporate entertainer, not an amusement park. Right. And I, but those the, the, those those differences come from the fact that it's just me. I'm selling me and whatever I'm doing is I'm gonna bring something to you know, the tricks are just the topics of conversation that I'm going to bring right. to this conversation I'm right. going to have with you in whatever group that is. One thing, you know, I just watched your show, and one thing I, I was watching the audience as much as I was watching you, and one thing I've noticed in my own work, you know, when I was doing parties, that, that the, the parents might hire you because they think the children will respond to the magic the best, but invariably, it's the parents leaning against the wall in the back of the room <laughs> who respond with the most power. And it was the same way in your show. Like, the kids loved it. But the people with their mouths just hanging open, like I was sitting next to a dad, and he, when, when you did the, the card thing at the end, his mouth just dropped. <laughs> and and I, I love that. And I, I wanted, I mean, you probably see this, you know, more than most magicians. Can you talk about when you're performing for a family audience, you know, how are you giving that experience of, of astonishment in a way that, that the kids feel it, the parents feel it? I mean, it's, you had just about every demographic in that audience, and they all loved it. Um, I think art is when you take authentic, genuine human content and blend it or express it with a skill or a craft. Mm -hmm. but, you, but it's gotta be both of those things. It, it, it has to be an external, an external activity that people can see and judge and create 
that creates an, an internal experience right. that, that takes us, and, and, so, and sometimes I don't think that wonder is the hardest thing to actually do. Yeah. It's the hardest because it's so much easier to fall short of that and it becomes just a puzzle. Right. And, and that's a lot of magic falls so short of that. Right. And so I tend to want to create these other, this, this, this funny, interesting, you, you, you're connecting to the human quality, the motivation I have to show you this, or the passion, or the, or the silliness, or the whatever that is. So it's the internal experience that isn't necessarily wonder for me. It's not, I, I'm not always going for that right. amazement. You, know, you ask me, how do I do that? I don't think I'm always trying to fool people. I would much rather that you just laughed, or that you had that moment you learned something, or you connected right. to it in some way. So I think, again, that connective tissue is, is it, it just it all goes back to that. I think that's a great, I, I like that a lot because in my own work, I've run into that same thing. It's easy to fool people. It's easy to deceive them. It's also easy to entertain or inspire, right? right? But but wonder is is like a ghost, right? And and <laughs> very ephemeral, yeah, right? And I don't think you can create it. I think you I think sometimes it shows up, and you can do the same <laughs> show, and sometimes it right. doesn't. Yeah. So in my show, I've structured it in a way so that if it does sort of stop by, you know, <laughs> to sort of grace us with its presence, then you can let that resonate. But if it doesn't, you have other other things to fall back other on. Other things of value. Right. right. I know I know you have to go do a show in just a minute. So so let me just end with this. I know a lot of people who watch this are magicians and young magicians starting out. What what do you know now that you wish you had known about magic when you were a teenager? I think that you need to figure out who you are. And that's what all the magic should support, should bring out, should should be the thing that that it's it's not you doing the ma the ma the magic doesn't make you. It's not you know you have the best classic palm. You, right. you have the best you know, classic pass. You, 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 it's not what you do. It it is what it, it's what you bring kind of to that. It, it's a it's a it's what that skill brings out of you. Right. We all have, you know, individual wonderful journeys that we've taken and the human condition, the human stories that we have are really still the most fascinating thing. When we watch movies, when we read books, they're about people. This is Fitzky 101. Right. Human beings. It's not about things. It's not about a coin. It's not about a deck of cards. It's about human beings. Um, that's the number one thing that we're interested in. We're storytellers. When we finished speaking, I left so Ben could get ready for his third show of the day. And on my way out, I saw a meeting with his assistants to go over notes about how they could make the next show even better. This, after they've already done that performance something like 500 times this summer. You can always, always, always make a thing better. I think that was my favorite moment of the day. But, here is a close second. That was, that was even better than it looked on camera. It's been a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.